Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhoneDev.tv. I want to show you how to update a Swift 1.2 code project. This is a Sprite Kit game to Swift 2. So if you've done the conversion in the past from Swift 1.1 to 1.2, you're going to be in a better position to update to Swift 2 because the changes are, are mostly made by Xcode for you and you don't have to worry about them as much. All right, so what we're going to do here is we are going to open up this project. Now, I've already opened this up and I think I said don't update, so I accidentally closed that, but if you do something like that, you wanna convert an older project, you're going to, when you first open it up, if I go to run this, I do Command R to run or I hit the run button, we're gonna see a ton of errors. So before we try to fix any of this, we know that this code was written, uh, I guess I started writing this in August of last, or no, that's this year, um, but some parts of this I, I started writing a while ago and I now need to update them. So I'm going to go to edit, convert, and then to latest Swift syntax. And we'll go ahead and do that. We'll see this little message here. You really only want to run this once between uh, version changes. So if this is going from Swift 1.1 or 1.2 to Swift 2, then that's good. But you don't want to run it multiple times after you've already converted it to the latest version of the API. All right, so let's go ahead and convert. This is Swift 1.2 to Swift 2. We're gonna convert our target. So this is gonna change some settings for us that need to get changed. And then it's gonna give us a preview of all the changes. Now I find that going from Swift 1.2 to Swift 2 was a lot more straightforward. It fixed a lot more things for me and I didn't have to worry as much. All right, so this is going to update a lot of uh, code for us. If you have something that could be a, a constant value, so a let instead of a var, it will make that suggestion again. That gives you a small performance improvement. It's um, something that I didn't really think was necessary, but they've included it. So if they can automatically do it for me, that's fine, as long as you don't need to change that value. All right, so another thing that we're going to notice here, we have the automatic wrapping of the the do catch syntax. So this is for the, the try catch. We've got a, a try statement that's being inserted here. You can notice that we're going from the older APIs where we had the error parameter that was passed in. So a lot of APIs have changed anything that takes an error. So anything that deals with files like music, audio, video, anything like that is going to have API changes. And you're going to see that the error thing is no longer there. If you're loading from a file or saving to a file, the error parameter is now something that gets thrown. This is a new error handling model for Swift in Swift 2. So Xcode was kind enough to actually automatically convert this for us. So it introduced our try statement inside of a do clause. And this is all new. We have a catch where it's catching the error. Now, I previously had declared an error. This is something I can go back to and update since I, I really don't need uh, the, the way it is written over here. And so it's really up to me if I want to remove it. Right now, this code is going to behave the same way as it did over here. So before I was printing out a message if there was an error, and that was by checking to make sure the error was not nil. Now what it's doing is it's assigned to my local variable, and it will still print out if there is an error. Um, but I could actually move this line of code to print statement up here, and I could do something with it. All right, so that is convenient. So that's an update that's automatic that seems to be working. Another change that we're going to see is the touches began. If you're working with anything that has a set, all of the sets, methods, and APIs all worked with NS object. Well, now new in Swift 2, as of I think beta 5 or 6, we now get better type information. So it actually can be a UI touch. And I was I was really confused why this couldn't be a UI touch from the beginning, but it's because it wasn't all implemented in the original API, so they had to go back and update that. And so now there's a lot more uh, syntax help for what types of objects they are. And these are Objective-C APIs that have been sort of uh, added information so you know what type is stored using generics. And so that's a new feature in the latest version of Objective-C, and the APIs are taking advantage of that. All right, another thing we'll notice here is that UI event became an optional before it was non-optional. So there are some API changes with touches began, touches canceled, touches moved, and, and this is one area where I'm using it. So that's nice that that gets handled for me. I can see the touches moved was also updated. 
Um, anywhere along this bar, you're going to see these little lines when you're scrolling. So if you scroll with the mouse wheel or the trackpad, you'll see these little lines. That means that something has changed. And we can see uh, this was weird. For some reason, touch is canceled. The UI event is a... Nope, sorry, wrong thing. Uh, for some reason, I, I was talking about the touches. For some reason, this was an implicitly unwrapped optional, and now it has become an optional. So that's the the one difference that I've seen with the touches canceled. It's going to behave a little bit different when you write your code. If you do anything here, I just have a pickup uh, parameter, so I'm not using the touches if they exist, but you might have code that was looking at those touches, I guess, if they were there. Maybe they're not there. Uh, I've never used the touches in a touches canceled. I usually disable things or turn things off um, when something like that happens. All right, so we're going to scroll down and see what else has changed. Uh, this is a change that I saw when I was converting from Swift 1.1 to Swift 2. So this is a change in the API for this block. I'm not sure why some of these changes happened, but they did. So it's going to be making you change your code. Here we can see a bunch of variable parameters are getting turned into let's because I'm not actually modifying these. These are any anytime you work with SK Action, you create a lot of different variables. They can all be let. They don't need to be var. So unless you're actually changing them and inserting things or something like that. So it looks like a lot of changes in that code file are related to the var to let. Now we're going to see, um, let's walk through this. In the middle here, we've got some changes. The interface orientation, this stuff has changed. I don't think this is going to work when we run it, but we'll find out. Um, trying to see what it's actually changed. It doesn't look like it changed something that's going to actually help me. I'm going to have to fix this. I can see there's an issue here. The only thing that it did change that was right was this. This is now a set. Uh, it's a special option set. And we're going to have to return an array of the, the values here. Not uh, We're not going to be using the bitwise or anymore. All right, so we'll scroll down. Did I see anything else? One more change. Here, it, it was kind enough to fix the error, so it actually removed the error for me. It didn't do this from Swift 1.1, but it does do it for Swift uh, 1.2 to Swift 2. So that change is nice. That was automatic. Then my pause view controller, let's see, we've got some print lines that are being changed to print. And as of Swift Beta 6, print has changed a little bit more um, from previous Swift 2. So you're going to have to potentially update or change the way you wrote some of your print lines if you did anything fancy with the Terminator, which is your new line, or the separator, which is, is actually a lot more powerful. All right, so let's save this. So I'm going to click the Save button in the bottom right. And the other thing I want to do is I want to update to recommended settings. So again, this will change some of these values for me. And now I'm going to do a command B to build. Hopefully it runs, but I know it's not going to run because there are some changes that didn't get picked up. Uh, the, the texture class has changed a little bit, so I have to force unwrap the texture. So this is just the nature of it. I'm using the texture that I loaded right here in my sprite node to do my per pixel physics collision detection. And so I'm going to have to change that. Uh, looks like we also have to force unwrap the, the music URL. It looks like this API has changed a little bit. Uh, it looks like the URL for resource it returns an optional. So this changed so that it returns an NSURL question mark. So that means it's an optional NSURL. I don't think it did that before in the prior version. So in order to get this to work, I can add the exclamation mark that will force unwrap it. Now, the potential downside of that is that if you have the wrong music file, this is going to crash right here. Now, if this is only something that happens once in a while, that's fine. You can fix it before you release your app. But if you have multiple music tracks where the user can select things, you're going to have to add a little bit more logic to make this safer because this is not safe if that's going to not be the only music file that you're playing and you want to load like based on what the user clicks on. So that is a potential pitfall uh, for music playback. All right, let's see what else we've got. I'm going to look at the errors on the left here. So I'm going to go to the the downcast. So again, we switched from set of NS object to set of UI touch objects. So we no longer have to cast them as a UI touch like I had to. So I can just grab the first element. It's going to be a UI touch object. So we're going to get that type inference. 
and we don't need to cast it. All right, so let's just copy that line so you can see how it's going to look. So we just get rid of the ending. And we're going to have the same issue here. I'll just copy that so you can see how this changes. We just get rid of the ending. So we don't need to convert to a UI touch because it is now a UI touch inside of the Swift set object. So I'll just build and that error should go away. All right, once you get rid of an outer compilation error, you'll get some feedback on modifying other properties. So we can change this var to a let and that will make that warning go away. All right, it looks like we've got a couple more issues to fix up. Here we have to force unwrap the texture again. I'm using the asteroids alpha value for the per pixel collision detection. So if this fails, then the app crashes. Now that could be when the asteroid first comes on, your app's gonna crash, but that's something that you can catch before you ship your game. So you just have to be a little bit careful with these and it looks like we've got a ton of lets that were not updated because there was a syntax issue with some of the, the code around it. So that's going to be a lot of work to fix up, but we can use the copy paste to fix that quickly because fixing each one of these by clicking on them is a little bit slow. All right, so next up, I want to have the game work in only the portrait and the portrait upside down. So here's the supported orientation masks. This has changed. This used to be an int value. So you see I had to cast. It was super awkward to work with. Now it's a lot easier. So what this actually becomes, we can comment these two lines of code out. We're just going to return, and then this is gonna be a UI interface orientation mask. And I want the portrait, and I want to do the other one. Now, before we would use the, the vertical bar to put them together, now since we have this new option set type, which you're gonna see across all the APIs, you can put them in an array syntax and you can just put them in a list, which actually makes a lot more sense. It's not as low level code that we're writing. And if we go ahead and build this, this should work. And there we go. So you can see how, how this has evolved over time. So we're going from uh, just returning the orientation uh, as an int, um, to returning an array syntax, and this is for the option set type. So if I hold uh, the option or alt and click on this, you can see this is an option set type. So this is gonna be true for any API that now uses the option set types for structures or any values that are being passed around. This makes it a lot easier to, to list the attributes you want. So this allows me to have only a portrait style game. This is not a landscape game, so we can go ahead and run. And we've got some more things to fix. So let's fix all these, these vars really quickly. The easiest way to do this is to just type let. And then if you just copy this and paste it anywhere you see this, that should help. Now there's a lot of instances where we don't need a variable. We can just use a constant value. And so that's where the, the let is useful. Let's find out if there's more. So I'm just gonna jump around, try and find them and just copy let paste it over var this is the quickest way as you can see i can click on this little triangle thing and it'll tell me the same exact thing but that's like double clicking and then clicking so it's it's super slow so let's build it again see if we can find some more that need to be fixed so if we scroll down there's a bunch when i was calculating some some values here so i'm just going to change all of these just double click and paste and i'm using command v to paste so we'll just build all right, so we're down to one issue to fix. Now this one is just legacy old projects. I'm not really sure. It's looking for a, a framework. Now you have to, <clears throat> for this one, you have to actually read the message. You can Google this. The dash F here is really important. So this is during the linking phase, I believe, for the space game test. Now it's really important that you wanna read what this says on the left. Space game test, well, I'm not even writing any unit tests. So one solution is to just delete your target for the space game test. But uh, I'm going to show you how to fix it in case you are writing any unit tests for your game, which most likely you're not if this is your first game and you're just playing around with Swift. So you're going to click on your project navigator on the left, click on the project. You should see your targets here. If you don't, you got to click this little thing 
to make them pop out. Now you have to click on either the space game or space game test, whichever one has the issue, and you're gonna jump to your build settings. Once you're in here, just search for search paths. That should show you something. And there's two things. So if you have a dash F, that means you're looking for a framework, that's this one. If you had a dash L, that's a library, that's this one. With all the, the Sprite Kit games, I've only ever seen this for the framework search path. When you start a new project, this is blank. So what you're gonna do is you just click on it and press delete, that will get rid of it. Now, if you have other things in there, you don't wanna do that. So you can do, actually you can't undo that. So um, there's no going back once you remove that. Command Z doesn't seem to work here. So only do that if this is a really basic project and that was the only path that you saw. Otherwise you need to double click on it and then you have to select each row that you don't need and hit the, the minus option here. All right, so that should be it. So I'll just build this and we can run the game. Now the game was already running, but we were just fixing some of the warnings. And now you can see this is a little bit more advanced. There's a lot more going on in this game. We've got some enemies, we've got uh, lives and, and things like that. And right now the player is invincible. So that's a quick little demo on how to update from Swift 1.2 to Swift 2. There are a bunch of changes. Thankfully, Xcode makes a lot of them for you and the rest aren't too hard to figure out, but there are a few that take a little bit of tweaking. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope that you're able to get your Swift code working with the latest Xcode 7.